Hi guys and welcome to my channel. This evening I've got a very cool and unique species of snake to show you guys. Uh, this is the southern stiletto snake, Atrakt Aspis vibroni. Now these snakes are fossorial species of snake and they live majority of their lives underground not reaching more than between 20 to 40 centimeters in length and with maximum about 70 centimeters but that's very 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 rare. Because of the close proximity or the very small spaces that these guys live in they've got a very unique adaptation to be able to live this very underground lifestyle. Now, as you can see, the coloration is very black to purpley black to like brown black, and then sometimes can be quite light on the underside and varying all the way to black on the underside. So it can be almost a completely uniform black snake with sometimes some blotching under its belly and a slightly lighter colored belly. There is some variability in the localities around Southern Africa. These guys have got a couple of very cool features and the adaptation these guys have, and it's very difficult to distinguish the difference between these snakes because they look quite similar to the purple gloss snake, as well as your wolf snakes and your Natal black. You know, these snakes don't look very venomous. It doesn't look like a dangerous snake, so people tend to pick them up, and that's when the problem comes in. range all the way from South Africa up into Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Namibia and Botswana. Now they're quite generalist in terms of habitat all the way from the Namib Desert down into the Feinbos in the Western Cape and uh, across to KwaZulu-Natal in moist savanna and lowland swamps as well as lowland forests. These guys have got very specially adapted front fangs. They fix front fangs unlike the adders. These guys used to be called mole adders before they were described as their own species. They used to be thought to be vipers and adders, but they are not. They're a type of asp. These guys have got very special adaptations with their fangs. Their fangs actually sit in the roof of the upper jaw, going all the way to the back of the front jaw. They can't actually hinge out those fangs like adders can. They literally are fixed in that position in the under jaw. So now because of their fossorial nature, they'll go through burrows, etc. Instead of actually striking at their prey, they actually push up against it and stab it with their teeth. Now that is also one of the reasons that this snake is one of the snakes that you can't actually handle with your hands safely at all. It always has to be used with forceps or use an item like this, like I'm using now, to be able to lift it or move it a broom or a mop or something just to sweep it out of your house is the safest way to manage this snake. Because now if you were to grab it behind the head, all it does, it doesn't have to turn around or anything, it literally just turns its neck to the sides like this and it will jab you in your finger. Now it's an extremely, extremely painful bite, majority cytotoxic, but there is some neurological or neurotoxic effects in the beginning of the bite, drowsiness and some nausea and then that's followed by intense pain, swelling, bruising and necrosis and if left untreated some people can lose or have lost fingers or toes or things like that. It tends to rot all the way down to the flesh, creates immense blistering on the fingers or on the toes or wherever you get bitten and now those blisters shouldn't actually be cut, they should be left for about six days to allow the body to heal itself and to process the bite of this snake. They feed on Anything from snakes to small lizards or burrowing toads and frogs, anything they can pretty much get their mouths on, these guys will chow down. And they're also very well adapted to these moist environments, cruising around uh, during the night to be able to find some prey or cruising around in the burrows looking for prey as well. So another interesting adaptation that this snake has as well, and I don't know if you can see that there, but it's got a quite blunt little tip of the tail. And that little blunt tip, if people pick it up 
as well. They can poke you with that little tail to give you the sensation that you're getting bit, at which point you let it go. So I'm sure it would do just the same. It didn't evolve because of humans picking it up, but because of predators trying to eat it. So if a predator were to grab it anywhere along its body, it would spin the tail around. I guess it would spin the fang, fang around as well but they also use their tail to be able to poke an aggressor to make it feel like it's getting bitten. So perfectly adapted fossorial underground species of snake. So these guys are oviviparous, meaning they're laying eggs anywhere between seven to about 15 eggs, and they come out at about 13 to 15 centimeters in length. So on that note, guys, we have a beautiful little stiletto snake found out here in Durban in South Africa, and I'm gonna sign off. So guys, if you liked watching this video, please hit that notifications bell. Please do subscribe. And remember to stand for what we stand on.